Okay, let's go ahead and do some related rates problems. So, um, with these, there's usually a lot of writing involved uh, with the problem statement. So instead of using the board like we usually do, um, we'll just have a worksheet here. And if you want to get a copy of this and follow along with the video, um, check the video description here, and uh, you'll find a link to where you can download this and uh, save it, print it out if you want, uh, so you can follow along. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do in this video <clears throat> is uh, go through this example here um, while outlining this general process of steps to follow for related rates. So the thing with uh, related rates problems is that there's really no specific process that you can use for uh, every single type of problem, but um, there is a general process here that we can follow and we can just kind of adapt it to each problem as we need. So um, it's really not too bad, but let's go ahead and um, read this example here. So with a related rates problem, the first thing you should always do is uh, read the whole problem here. So um, example one, a 17 foot ladder is sliding down a wall. Uh, the base of the ladder is moving away from the wall at a rate of two feet per second. And uh, we want to know how fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall when the base of the ladder is eight feet away from the wall. Okay. So um, basically we just have this 17 foot ladder leading up against the wall, it's uh, sliding down it and uh, the base is moving away at a rate of two feet per second. And um, we want to know how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the base of the ladder um, is a certain amount of feet away from the wall, eight feet away. So uh, we read the whole problem, so now what we do is we go up to our steps here um, for this general process. And step one says draw and label a picture if possible. So um, generally speaking, um, it, it's probably always going to be, or it's almost always going to be possible uh, because related rates problems, they usually involve some kind of physical application where, you know, something's actually happening physically and it's not just some abstract concept. Uh, so it's something that you most likely will be able to draw a picture for. Um, anyway, in this case, uh, let's draw and label a picture. So we have a ladder uh, sliding down a wall. So let's go ahead and just draw a wall here. So here's our wall and uh, here's a ladder leaning up against it. And then here's our uh, ground here, ground or the floor or whatever. Okay, so, uh, and we can just assume that the, uh, the wall and the ground, they meet at a 90 degree angle. So we have a 90 degree angle here. Um, so the ladder, we're told that the ladder is 17 feet. So we can just label, uh, here's our ladder. We're just going to label that as 17. So in general, um, your picture shouldn't have any numbers in it unless you know those numbers are constants. So uh, here, like here it says, uh, we want to know how fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall when the base of the ladder is 8 feet away from the wall. So um, we don't want to label this 8 because, you know, the, here's the base of the ladder, here's the wall. And yeah, we're asking stuff uh, about the ladder when, it's, when the base is 8 feet away from the wall. But it's not always 8 feet away from the wall. Okay, this uh, 8, that's not really a constant. Because as the ladder slides down, um, you know, the base is going to get farther and farther away from the wall. But, you know, it's always going to be a 17 foot ladder, so we can label that, that's fine. But this, uh, we shouldn't label 8, so let's just call it X. Okay, so this will be x here. All right, um, and similarly, uh, the height, you know, from the top of the uh, the tip of the ladder here down to the ground, that height's going to be changing too. So we'll call that y. Okay, so that's step one. We have our uh, picture here that's uh, labeled. So here's x, uh, the distance from the base of the ladder to the wall, and then y, the height uh, from the ground to the top of the ladder, and then the ladder is always 17 feet. So now, let's go back up to our general process in step two. Using mathematical notation, make a list of what you are given and what you want to know. Okay, so uh, we're given some information in the problem here, and there's also some stuff we want to know. So let's write down what we're given. So let's zoom out a little bit here. <clears throat> so what are we given? Uh, we're given, well, it's a 17-foot ladder, but we already labeled that in the uh, picture here, so we don't really have to uh, write it down again. But what else are we given? Uh, the base of the ladder is moving away from the wall at a rate of two feet per second. Okay, so um, in other words, this x here, x is changing at a rate of two feet per second. So when we talk about uh, changing in rates and stuff like that, what is that? Well, that's a derivative, right? So um, it's changing, uh, x is changing at a rate of two feet per second. So um, in related rates problems, it's sort of custom to let uh, lowercase t represent your variable uh, for time. So um, if, you know, the rate of change of x with respect to time is 2 feet per second, then in mathematical notation, 
a mathematical notation that would be uh, dx dt equals 2 and then feet per second. Okay, And it's going to be a positive 2 because uh, x is increasing. Okay, so remember, uh, if this you know, if this rate is positive, then that means the quantity in question is increasing. So as the ladder slides down the wall, uh, the ladder sliding down the wall, that means the base is sliding away from the wall, right? So that means x is getting larger. So dx dt should be positive. Okay, so that's what we're given there. Um, and that's pretty much all we're given, right? Uh, dx dt is 2 feet per second, and, you know, we're also given it's a 17-foot ladder. So what do we want to know? Uh, or we want to know, so we'll call this want, what do we want? We want, um, we want to know how fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall when the base of the ladder is eight feet away from the wall. Okay, so what we're being asked to find is how fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall? So what would that be in mathematical notation? Well, the top of the ladder, uh, its location is given by y, right? So if you start on the ground here and if you go up y uh, feet, then you're going to be up here at the top of the ladder. And we want to know how fast is the top moving down the wall. Okay. So in other words, uh, what's the rate of change of y with respect to time? So in other words, we want to find dy dt. And when do we want that? Uh, we want it when the base of the ladder is 8 feet away from the wall. So in other words, we want that when x is 8 feet. So we want dy dt when uh, x equals 8 feet. All right. So that's uh, step two, using mathematical notation, make a list of what you're given and what you want to know. So we're given this, uh, you know, in English we translated that to mathematical notation here, and we were told what we want in English up here, and we translated that to mathematical notation here. Okay? So now step three, um, write down the relevant equation or equations, and they're usually going to be geometric formulas, so... Um, you know, it's, it's not too often that the equations you'll write down, uh, it's not too often that there'll be something besides geometry. But, you know, if we look at this picture here, what's going on? That's a right triangle, right? You know, here's a, a right angle, here's one leg, here's another leg, and we have a hypotenuse here, right? So, um, what, you know, what's a famous formula we know that's uh, related to right triangles? Uh, it's the Pythagorean theorem, right? So, x squared plus y squared equals 17 squared, right? Okay, so, um, and if we want, we could say, okay, x squared plus y squared equals uh, 289. But for, the, for what we're doing right now, that doesn't matter too much. Um, it will later, but anyway. So x squared plus y squared equals 289, so that's from the Pythagorean theorem, okay? And that's, that's pretty much it for step three, write down the relevant equations. Um, there are other equations we could write down for this triangle, you know, because um, when you deal with a triangle, you know, you can have the Pythagorean theorem if it's a right triangle. Uh, you also have an area formula, perimeter, stuff like that. And, um, you know, there's kind of a key word here, write down the relevant equations. So how do we know what's relevant? Well, um, the more practice you get with these, you know, um, the more you'll be able to tell what's relevant and what's not. But, you know, if you think something might be relevant and you're not sure yet, just go ahead and write it down anyway. Um, and if you don't end up using it, that's fine. So write down any equations you think might be useful or relevant, and then use um, whichever ones of them, you, you know, whichever ones you need. So, okay, anyway, this is the only one we'll need for this problem. <clears throat> so now we go back up here, and step four is uh, implicitly differentiate both sides of the appropriate equation with respect to time, or in other words, with respect to the variable t. Okay. So what does that mean, appropriate equation? Well, if you have more than one equation written down, um, you'll have to differentiate the uh, appropriate one. But here, we only have uh, one equation that we used. So we're just going to take this and uh, implicitly differentiate with respect to time. So what does that really mean? Um, well, remember implicit differentiation, um, you know, basically you have, when we did implicit differentiation a few videos ago, we had a y implicitly defined as a function of x. But now, uh, what we're going to have is, <coughs> uh, excuse me, x and y are going to be implicitly defined as functions of t, okay? So there's no t that appears anywhere in this equation, but that's okay because uh, we're still going to pretend that x and y are functions of t, or not really pretend, because actually they are, right? Um, as time changes, so, you know, so do x and y. Okay, because as time goes on, the ladder slides down the wall here, so x uh, increases and y actually decreases, right? So x and y, they pretty much are functions of time. So uh, x and y depend on t. So, um, 
we can take the derivative of x with respect to t and the derivative of y with respect to t. And to do that, we have to use implicit differentiation, or in other words, uh, the chain rule, right? Because remember, implicit differentiation really just is the chain rule. So um, if we want to implicitly differentiate both sides with respect to t, what happens on the left? Well, x squared, um, and if we implicitly differentiate with respect to t, then that's going to be 2x, and then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative okay, of the little guy. So remember, um, x is a function of t, and then we square that, so we have a function inside of another function. Okay? So the inside function is x, and the outside function is squaring. So the chain rule says derivative of the outside, or the big guy, which gives us 2x, and then times the derivative of the inside, or the little guy. All right. So that's where that comes from. Uh, and then basically the exact same idea over here, except now we have y instead of x. So this is just going to be 2y uh, dy dt. Okay, again, y is a function of t, and then it's being squared. So we have a function inside of another function. Uh, the little guy or the inside guy is y. The big guy or the outside guy is squaring. So uh, derivative of the big guy is 2y times, or sorry, yeah, the, the derivative of the big guy uh, evaluated at the little guy, so that's why we leave the y there, and then times uh, the derivative of the little guy, dy dt. Okay, and then equals, uh, the right side's easier. Okay, it's just a constant 289. If we differentiate that with respect to uh, any variable, we just get zero, right? Derivative of any constant is zero. Okay, so now, um, now this next step, you know, we have a common factor of two, we can uh, cancel out. So if we divide everything by 2, divide both sides by 2, then uh, these will cancel out. And we'll just have x times dx dt uh, plus y times dy dt equals 0. OK. So now um, let's go back up here and say, OK, we want dy dt when x equals 8 feet. So now, uh, well, that's pretty much it for step 4 implicitly differentiate both sides of the appropriate equation with respect to time, so we did that. Now step five is plug in the known quantities and solve for the unknown variable. All right, so what do we know? Um, we know dx dt is two feet per second. Um, now it's time to plug in x equals eight, okay? Uh, so we want to be careful about when we plug in the actual numbers. So plug them in after you differentiate, um, unless they're constants throughout the entire problem. So like here, the ladder is 17 feet, and you know, no matter what the ladder is doing, whether it's sliding down the wall or it's being pushed up or whatever, um, it's always a 17-foot ladder. So that's why we can just put the 17 here, because um, that's always a constant. But again, this x uh, equals 8, that's not a constant. x changes. So we have to wait until we get down to here. Um, after we've taken the derivative, now we can plug in x equals 8. So x is 8. Um, dx dt, that's 2 feet per second we're given. We want to find dy dt, um, but what about y? We don't have any information about why. Well, um, that's what the other part of step five says. Uh, use the original equation to get more info if necessary. So what's our original equation? Well, it's uh, this here, right? x squared plus y squared equals 17 squared, or 289. So now we have to go back here and get more info, because we don't know what y is. But what do we know? Well, we do know that x and y are related by this equation, right? x squared plus y squared equals 289. And we also know that this is all happening when x equals 8 feet. So what we want to do is say, OK, um, when, when x equals 8 feet, uh, what is y? And then when we find out what y is, we can plug that into here. So then we'll have x, dx, dt, and y, and then we can find dy, dt. Okay. So when x equals 8 feet, what's y? Well, how do we find that out? Use this equation here. Um, x squared plus y squared equals 289. And then uh, just let x equal 8, and then we're going to solve for y. So 8 squared plus y squared equals 289. Um, so 8 squared is 64. Uh, subtract 64 from both sides. Then we get y squared equals 289 minus 64, which is uh, 225. OK. And then we take a square root of both sides. So um, if you take a square root of something squared, then really uh, you have the positive and the negative, right? But y represents a distance or a length. Okay, it's the distance from the ground to the uh, top of the ladder. So y has to be positive. So we're only going to take the positive root. So it's just going to be uh, 15. Okay, the square root of 225 is 15. And again, um, 
when you have an equation like this that you're solving just in general, you have a positive and a negative, but we ignore the negative because y represents a physical distance, you know, a physical length. So it, uh, it should be positive. So y is 15, all right? So now that's good. Now we can take this and plug this into the equation because uh, when x equals 8, uh, what is y? It's 15. That's what we just found out here. Um, okay, so now if we plug that into here, we have uh, x is 8, so that's 8. And then dx dt is uh, 2. Okay, we're told that's always 2 feet per second. So 8 times 2 plus y we just found is 15. Okay, plus 15 times uh, dy dt equals 0. All right. So now 8 times 2, uh, that's 16. So basically 16 plus 15 times dy dt equals 0. So we're running out of room, so let's go over here. Um, so 16 plus 15 dy dt equals 0. So subtract 16 from both sides and then divide both sides by 15. So uh, 15 dy dt equals negative 16. And then divide both sides by 15. Um, and then we get dy dt equals negative 16 over 15. All right, and then your answer should always have units. So what are our units here? Um, well, they're given in the problem, it's feet per second. And we know to use feet per second because we're looking for a rate. So this should be uh, not feet and not seconds, but feet per second, because it's a rate, dy dt, that's a rate, a rate of change of something. So this is feet per second. So dy dt is negative 16 over 15 feet per second. So what does that mean for this to be negative? You know, um, when we get an answer like this, we should think about it and make sure it makes sense. So dy dt, um, if a rate of change of something is negative, that means that quantity in question is decreasing. And does that make sense here? Yeah, because uh, as the top of the ladder slides down the wall, uh, y is getting smaller, right? So imagine uh, the ladder sliding down the wall, uh, y is going to shrink and shrink and shrink, okay? Because the top is moving down closer to the ground, so the distance between the ground and the top of the ladder gets smaller. In other words, y is decreasing. Okay, so if y is decreasing, then uh, the rate of change of y with respect to time should be negative. And in fact, it is here, right? So um, one more thing to point out. Um, sorry, it's getting kind of cramped. We're running out of room here. But uh, if you want to answer the question in English, then what you should say is um, the top of the ladder. So the top of the ladder. Um, is moving down the wall at a rate of 16 over 15 feet per second, I'll abbreviate as uh, SEC. Okay, so here, there's no negative sign here, right? So you gotta be careful. Um, in mathematical notation, it's gonna have a minus sign in front of it. Um, Okay, because it indicates that uh, you know it's a negative rate of change, so the quantity here is decreasing. Uh, in mathematical notation, it has the minus sign. But when you answer it in English, um, you should say the top of the ladder is moving down the wall at a rate of 16 over 15 feet per second. Okay, so because what you're really doing here is um, all you're talking about is the rate of change here, and you're not really talking about you know what's increasing, what's decreasing. Um, but also, it's kind of already mentioned here when you say down. Okay, so the top of the ladder is moving down the wall at a rate of 16 over 15 feet per second. Okay, so here we're not really saying anything about down. All you're saying is uh, the, you know, y is decreasing because dy dt is negative 16 over 15 feet per second. So here in mathematical notation, dy dt is a negative quantity. So that means y is decreasing. Uh, but here we don't want to make this negative because we're saying the top of the ladder is moving down the wall. And how fast is it moving down the wall? Uh, it's moving down the wall this fast, 16 over 15 feet per second. So just kind of a tiny detail um, worth mentioning there. Tiny but pretty important, I guess. So uh, that's example one with related rates.